In the past, reed mats were a must-have item in every household in Vietnam. For bedding, family meals and leisure activities, mats are multi-purpose and ubiquitous. Mat making was a thriving trade then, and so it remains, particularly in the rural areas of the country. Hello and welcome to this episode of Vietnam Discovery. I'm Thomas, I'm from England, and I've journeyed to the Kim Sun district to find out more about the craft of mat weaving. Now, as I'm sure you already know, the relationship between the Vietnamese people and the mat is a closely knit one. From birth, to family meals, to wedding presents even, the mat is a constant motif and ever present throughout people's lives. So pull up a rug and enjoy the show. Kim Sun is one among six districts of Ning Bing province. The community's best known landmark is the Fat Diem Cathedral. It is famous for the beautiful architecture which fuses oriental and western styles. People in Kim Sun mainly live off agriculture, while various small communities ply their trade at weaving, each boasting signature styles. I am going to the scenic village named Kim Ching where reed mat weaving has brought wealth and a sense of identity to the villagers. The workshop that I am going to visit is among the best in the community. Em chào anh. Thomas đã gặp. Uh, một bạn khác gần ở đây, bạn ấy nói um, ở đây là siêu bạn nhất ở Kim Trình. Nói chung là, là toàn bộ cả nàng luôn, là làm cái nghề chiếu cói này. Bố mẹ để lại thì các anh cái chị ở đây là cứ làm đều. Tô mát có muốn học không? Dạ muốn. Thôi tô mát rồi đi, đây nhá. Đoạn công đoạn đầu này, chịt ngang đây này. Ok. Đấy. Đây tay này, tô mát đưa lên. Đấy. At the moment, what I am doing is removing the shorter reeds from the bunch. This step ensures all the reeds used in one mat are of equal length. Have you noticed this special spike? Tan tells me that he invented it so as to pull out the cover of the grass roots. So, in principle, what I'm doing is the struggle that every Vietnamese lady has to go through in the morning, where they have to comb their very long hair. These spikes are like metallic teeth and similar to a comb, and these reeds are just a bunch of strands that need ironing out, putting in some order. M. Sumptua. Okay. The reeds are dried, but before the weaving process begins, they are soaked in water to provide the material with moisture. The reeds then have a soft yet durable texture suitable for mat making. Another key material is jute cord. Jute cords are used as vertical yarns while the reeds are fashioned into horizontal threads. Two people are required in the weaving process. I'm surprised that it's not something that a machine does, they do it with their hands, so it's just kind of um, impressive the resolve that the um, artisans have to sit down for hours on end, hours at a time, and they can be there all day. Yep. Am I going yeah. in? Alright, yeah. so the man high tay come here and I. So, this is how people use the loom. Each person is consigned to one task. Though whichever task it is, it has to be completed with no errors. It's like a small assembly line.
Okay, so the fun part is the bashing of the wood against the reeds. However, the tricky part is tying the little knots to complete it. And one key factor that is definitely preventing me from a career in mat weaving is my utter lack of flexibility. It really, really hurts. Thomas met the doy. Thomas <laughs> met Dạ, 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 số bác nhá, tao mang số bác nhá. Maybe if I wake up at 5am in the morning, go to um, Hogwam or uh, Chukbak Lake with the old ladies and do the um, those exercises. Maybe if I can go on a program of um, flexibility training for six months, I can come back and perhaps be a successful weaver. Who knows? Một tay này cầm vang và một tay này cầm cõi. Cứ không biết thì khoảng quấn cho một phát vậy. Đấy, được rồi. Quang vào. Đấy. This is this is just so difficult. Uh, mommy, I want to go home. This is too difficult. Nói thay chứ nhưng mà cứ học là được à? Ngày xưa anh chị làm ở đây là nhanh lắm. Cứ bố mẹ giật là con vang. Là cứ học hỏi nhau làm từ truyền thống của cha ông để lại đây. Mà bây giờ tất cả cả nàng làm như thế. Anh ơi, tại sao ở thành phố rất nhiều người muốn ngư trên đẹp nhưng mà anh vẫn làm chiếu? Thành phố có điều hòa thì là còn nằm đệm được. Nhưng mà ở thôn quê tôi không nắp điều hòa vì là tiết kiệm điện rồi này nọ nắm thứ tiền lắm ừ, cho nên rằng là ở chúng tôi là giữ cái nghề truyền thống này là như thế In Vietnamese they call the play mat chiều đầu it can be dried for longer to protract its life if a customer places an order Mr Tan will bring his mats to another workshop where the mats are embellished and made more colorful it seems that in the summertime he has to work around the clock. The printing workshop is more fun, at least for me. Firstly, people don't have to squat down while doing their job. Secondly, they work with the aid of templates, reducing the risk of error. Seems like a good time to try it out. Thomas, thấy chiếu Việt Nam có đẹp không? Rất đẹp, rất đẹp. Đẹp à? Okay. Uh. As you can see, these two ladies are working on the painting. The idea is that these mats are going to be sold to newly married couples to celebrate their great occasion as a gift. So there's a mat over there which says Chuk mừng hạnh phúc which means we wish you we wish you happiness. Em sẽ mua chiều sau đó em lấy vợ. À. Chiều này rất đẹp, rất đẹp. 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 Rất đẹp. Nhưng mà không được để dây vào quần được nha, nó đỏ đây. Đây đây, tay này ấn vào đây. Ấn chặt nhá. Vietnamese people are very patient and willing to help. Just look at the way I am guided in every step. Such a complimentary lady. This way? This way. Same way. Okay, got it. Alright, so I'm going extremely slowly. I feel like a little boy in kindergarten. I hope I don't ruin this lovely product. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Chila, cause out, Zoe, quá. Cảm ơn em. Không có gì.
And there we go, a little bit of painting. That was fun. To enhance the colour of the mats, they are steamed. About one hour in here. So then the mats are taken out and the paint has been transformed into really bright, really vivid colour. Okay, so you can get 20. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. You can fit a lot in one go. Okay. Ah, okay, so this one's a finished product. Here's the finished article. This is what they look like once they're done. The paint is dried and everything's perfect, ready for sale. Ở bên đấy Pharmat có dùng chiếu nào? Ô nước anh trên đó có nhiều nhiều chiếu nhưng mà không không đẹp dùng cái này không đẹp. Kim Ching people used to grow reeds for mat production back in the height of the industry. However, due to changes in the soil, reed fields have evolved into rice fields. Nowadays, weavers like Mr. Tan often go to the neighbouring community of Nga Sun, which is a 30-minute ride from his village in order to buy materials. While Mr. Tan selects the best reeds in the store, I take the chance to have a look at the reed fields myself. Beautiful scenery, isn't it? However, it's a really hot day. I'm going to find someone to talk to. Em chào ông. Em vâng. Chào chú. Ông đi làm. Em chơi nằm thế. À, cái cây cối này mà đến cái thời điểm mà không thu hoạch là nó chết đi. Cho nên em phải phải làm. Ông ơi. Um... Coi cao bao nhiêu um, thì cắt được? Một mét rưỡi cho đến hai mét. Em, em muốn làm thử hết được ừ. không? Cắt thấp xuống. Đấy, cắt, cắt thấp xuống, cắt thấp xuống. Farming is strenuous work, and I could consider myself a rather well-constituted individual. I mean, I do get in the gym from time to time, but I certainly don't have the endurance to continue chopping away the reeds like these guys do, especially under the heat. After being chopped down, the reeds are split into thinner strands by a roller machine. There are many steps to refine them so they qualify for map production. Làm về có khó không? Em nghĩ um, làm cái này dễ hơn um, làm cắt. Người kim trinh không chấm coi nữa. Uh, tại sao ở đây anh vẫn chấm? Vì ở đây là đất pha chua, không cấy được lúa, buộc phải là vẫn phải trồng cây cối. The reeds are inextricably twined with rural life here. They are grown in the people's lands, providing jobs and income. For me, someone on the way to explore the craft of mat weaving, 
it is good to know about its natural materials and see how they are utilised. So far on my journey to the Kim Ching community, I've been plying my hands a little bit of mat weaving with the help of the eminent Mr. Dunn, who carries out his trade in the typical and popular way. Now I'm off to meet a very special person, one of only two people in the area who still preserves the traditional technique of mat weaving. So we're going to go and meet him and find out what it is that makes him such a master of his trade. So follow me. M. Chaang. Anh có khoe không? Anh đang làm gì vậy? Anh đang làm chọn cõi để ra trúc khải. Nó làm này nó nhiều công đoạn mà nó cũng kỳ công lắm ạ. Dạ. Đầu tiên anh phải làm gì? Đầu tiên đây anh bắt đầu trước khi vào chiếu là anh phải kẻ như thế này. Đấy là tí mình ruộng đấy. Đấy. Right now our expert is marking each of these um, batches of reeds with ink and um, he knows where to place these marks because on his stick here he's already got the specific notches that he needs and then the marks will designate whereabouts, um, how high, so to speak, he needs to place the reed. Bình thường anh phải làm bao lâu? Bình thường như cái này nếu mà anh làm hai chiếc, nếu mình làm gói khoảng tầm một tiếng. So we've been to visit Mr. Dai, the expert mat weaver, and now we're off to see his lovely wife, who's in the kitchen. And she is, I believe, using the ink to dye the reeds as we speak. Chị ơi, em đưa cho chị. Dyeing the reeds is considered the most important step in producing the built-in patterns mat. Red seems to be the most popular colour for embellishment and, as far as I can see, it works really well here. Normally, Mr. Dai's wife dips the two ends of the reed into the ink pot first. Of course, she will have to be careful so the ink doesn't spill onto the wrong parts. Next, the middle part of the reed is dyed. She has to endure the heat until she is sure all the sections that need dyeing fully absorb the colour. No error should be made, otherwise it will appear on the mat once it's woven. It's a simple but it, it seems to be a pleasurable life for everyone. They have a smile on their face and they're laughing with each other all day. The work is hard but they're also working in conjunction with their family members as well. I say, làm như vậy cho anh. Lúc anh còn bé thì bố anh còn sống thì ông đã học được các cụ ngày xưa để ông truyền lại cho anh. Cái gì là khó nhất khi anh làm chưa? Nó khó nhất là đoạn mình bắt đầu mình ruộng cói đấy. 
vất vả còn khi mình đã lên vào chiếu mình giật quen rồi thì thế nào mình cũng giật được. The fact that he does it so quickly and memorizes um, like an enormous series of consecutive reads at once just goes through the whole thing goes through the whole process really really fast his hands are moving it's like he's having a little play on the piano or something the way that he presses down the strings is really impressive. Anh có thể rất hoa văn các loại không? Anh có giật được tất cả các loại hoa văn theo mẫu của khách hàng họ đặt. Okay. Uh, về anh có thể um, Z uh, tên của em được không? Được, tên em là gì? Uh, em tên là Thomas T H O M A S. Được anh nào là thế? Okay, challenge accepted. Em cảm ơn. So I'm looking forward to seeing the result. Mr. Dai is currently one of two people in Kim Chin community able to produce an authentic mat. As he and his wife have been working together for 20 years, they cooperate with great efficiency. The rhythm is really impressive, isn't it? Mr. Dai thinks that they can finish this in about one hour. They need to build about 50 centimeters of mat before the name Thomas will appear. So probably a good idea if I kind of stop distracting them let them finish the job, and after that we can be choy a little bit and have some fun. Right now he's actually kind of individually plotting his scheme to make the doormat name appear. At the moment, Mr. Dai is slowing down a little bit to calculate exactly where he needs his red marks um, relative to his white marks. This may be the most interesting experience I've had so far sitting in the workshop, away from the city, watching as my name is woven into a traditional Vietnamese mat. After forming my name, it takes these two guys another three hours until late at night to finish the mat. Look at the texture, the colour, and the sentiment woven in, apart from my name. These craftsmen, they claim what they do is executing a simple and repetitive technique, but I can see they are truly artists of their trade. Yay, we finished. Let's have a look. It looks really cool, I'm very happy with it. It kind of feels like uh, Christmas come early, that kind of thing. It's got a really special feeling, not just because it's red and white. Em come on, anh, anh đã làm chiều dạ rồi. Em come on. When you wake up in a map making village, you can hear local children, the future map weavers, singing popular folk melodies. These songs are a supplication, praying for sunshine, an important ritual for map weavers. The sun dries their reeds, their mats, and illuminates the playgrounds. I have a throwback to my own childhood, putting on the mask for a game of blind man's bluff with these lively kids. I hope this quaint, scenic village continues to enjoy prosperity brought from the trade their parents are preserving.
So here it is, the finished masterpiece. And as you may or may not know, it's commonplace for the mats to be given as gifts, especially at weddings, or purchased in pairs. So I guess my singular mat here is feeling a little bit lonely and wonders where its long lost counterpart could have gotten to. Maybe I should ask a fortune teller, or maybe better still, the owner could email Vietnam Discovery and let me know. In any case, I know that the mat hopes it's not gonna be forever alone. That would be very, very tragic. So, thank you for watching and see you again.